Hello again everyone, it's Vince Fora from TradingWinds.com and this is our update for September 13th, 2020. Let's take a quick look at how the markets finished off on Friday. We did see a bit of a mixed picture. The Dow was up 131 points. The S&P 500 managed to gain just less than 2 points, while the, the Nasdaq excuse me, gave back 66 points but did have a bit of a late day rally here and managed to avoid closing below that prior low which for now is very important um the russell 2000 was also lower by about 10 and a half points the bond market did finish slightly higher just back above that 20 period moving average while crude oil uh again uh managing what was it here about a six cent gain overall um gold uh, about a 20 cent gain no, nothing major there usd cad pair i'll give my screen a second to refresh uh, continues to remain above that 20 period moving average but not looking overly bullish at all and the dollar index remains within this range here we're waiting for a move either above these recent highs or below these recent lows we're still just kind of going sideways they're hanging on um now let's take a, a broader look here let's look at the uh, main etfs of the different sectors starting with energy here and you'll see um that we're still trending lower here and more importantly this week we gave up this prior low here we broke below there so it really looks like now that we're on our way to the march lows i mean there is some uh support here near 32 but um really 22 really does look to be in the cards here in the near future so we'll keep an eye on that financials flat just trying to hang on to the cloud here for now but you can see uh the 20 period moving average is completely flat no momentum there whatsoever technology sector um big bearish engulfing pattern here on that retest of that 20 um which failed and we did actually take out the low of that uh engulfing candle so we should realistically uh, see more downside at a minimum into this level of support here, which comes in just below 110. Um, then we'll see if we can bounce from there. If not, we could be in for a bigger pullback here on XLK. XLP, similar picture. We did get a move below the 20. It attempted to break back above, and now we're, we're failing so far um we have not breached the low of this engulfing candle but you know keep an eye on that uh for monday um xlu just going flat trying to hold on to that cloud um healthcare sector xlv here doing the same thing desperately trying to hang on another bearish engulfing pattern and we did see a move below at least intraday on friday below that that engulfing candle low um xly here um again another bearish engulfing pattern so uh, these are very very common here uh, over the last few sessions uh the real estate sector has been flat for a long time we can mark the lows here mark the highs we're gonna have to continue to wait for a move outside one of those trend lines there uh nothing happening so far um, xli the industrials uh, again we've lost momentum there uh xlb materials this is the one that continues to trend nicely higher here and actually saw some gains this week so um xlc though breaking down that's the communication etf uh the retail etf also breaking down here bearish engulfing pattern which was confirmed by a move below the low of that um engulfing candle and now we see uh, we wait to see if we take out this low which looks likely because of the lack of support here behind so that's the breakdown by sector looking forward at news this week um monday fairly light day n nothing really to report on tuesday we get the red book report while on wednesday fairly busy day here we get the nba mortgage apps number we get core retail sales um we get business inventories we get crude oil inventories here um but the biggest news on wednesday is the fed meeting uh where they will announce their decision on interest rates so will they move them or not 
highly unlikely that they make a move. But as always, uh, a lot of years will be on the language that they use in their statement, uh, which will be released right after their decision on interest rates at 2 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. Thursday, we get building permits, jobless claims, housing starts. Um, so a lot of uh, biggies there on Thursday as well. And Friday, we will get the uh, consumer sentiment report um, and uh, U.S. leading index on Friday as well. Now, in other news, on September 15th, that is on Tuesday, Apple is having their big product event. So that should be uh, a mover for, for the Apple shares. Now, they're expected to release a new version of the iWatch, of the iPad, and several other products. But they're expected to have a second event uh, later this fall where the, it will be focused on the actual iPhone. And they're expected to release another version of that um, coming up so um, that's really what we have going into this week now tomorrow so Monday September 14th we are having another live market chat kickoff at 1 p.m. Eastern and I'm hoping to have some setups for you to share with you at that time um, but uh, otherwise Really not a whole lot else. Keep an eye out for any news as we head closer to the election. Anything that is said by either side there could, could you know, um, cause a bit of a spike in volatility. So as we head into tomorrow, let's keep an eye on the futures market just in case. Not expecting anything, but you never know. Keep an eye on the futures market. And then once the market opens, let's see how those volatility indices like... Uh, like the VIX, for example, or the SQQQ uh, react. Okay. So again, I hope to see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern for our next live market chat, but that's about it for now. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you on our next update.